Good morning, everyone. So uh, today, again, uh, like the previous Fridays, we have a special uh, guest faculty lecture. Uh, and today's topic is on uh, ventilatory support, mechanical ventilation, uh, which uh, is very frequently required uh, in our patients, especially post-operatively, uh, either in very sick patients or in after uh, major operations sometimes electively and sometimes because of the patient's uh, condition. So I have requested uh, my colleague, Dr. Ashish Jain, who is the chief of critical care medicine uh, department uh, uh, at the Mahatma Gandhi Medical College Hospital to tell us the basic principles of uh, ventilatory support and mechanical ventilation. Dr. Ashish, please. Good morning. Myself, Dr. Ashish Jain. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Viti Kapoor, sir, for uh, inviting me for this uh, morning session on mechanical ventilation. As we all know, that mechanical ventilation is an integral part of uh, the patient management who is sick, and uh, basically it is the core content of anesthesiology and critical care. But I would like to touch upon here the basic fundamentals of mechanical ventilation which we use during the uh, patient care, the critical care. This is a picture of our respiratory system. We start from the nose and going up to till down to the alveoli. And uh, in alveoli, we know that uh, there are approximately 30 divisions of the tracheobronchial tree, out of which uh, the, the initial 20th division, there is the conductive system and the conductive zone, which does not take part in the gas exchange. Only beyond the respiratory bronchioles till the alveoli or the alveolar sacs, they are the primary unit of gaseous exchange. Uh, there are three basic zones which were uh, identified in the lung. One zone is the uppermost zone where the ventilation is good, but the perfusion is you know, quite low. So this zone is ventilated without perfusion or it is known as the dead space. The middle zone where the perfusion as well as the ventilation is optimum is the area where uh, normal gaseous exchange take place. And in the lowermost part of the lung, uh, where the perfusion is quite good, but because of the atelectasis of the alveoli, the ventilation is quite poor. So this is the zone of the shunting, zone three. And our physiology and uh, mechanical ventilation depends upon these zones. This is the very old picture, uh, which is taken from the Guyton physiology. And we know that there are four kinds of volumes and four kinds of uh, capacities. And for us, the most important is the tidal volume, which is the normal uh, around 500 ml volume, which we usually take during our quiet and uh, you know normal respiration. And uh, if we can can take a deep breath in, it is the inspiratory reserve volume. If we exhale out completely, this is the respiratory reserve volume. And what remains in the lung is the reserve volume or the residual volume. In the ventilation or uh, mechanical ventilator, we usually uh, depends upon a tidal volume, but we can extend or uh, we can utilize some sort of expiratory reserve volume and inspiratory reserve volume also to prevent the atelectasis and to apply the PEEP. One of the very important physics law which applied over the lung mechanics is the Boyle's law, and it indicates that increase in the tidal volume decreases the pressure. So how we breathe, uh, whenever there is increase in the H positive ion or acidosis or carbon dioxide in the blood, our central and peripheral chemoreceptors, they stimulated and it sends signals to, uh, to our uh, diaphragm. The diaphragm goes down and it increases the volume of the thoracic cavity. Because the pleura is adhere to the diaphragm and the rib cage, it also expand. But lungs lags behind and it produces a pull or a negative pressure, which is called a transpulmonary pressure. This pressure is negative pressure. And because of this negative pressure, which is by measure around, around five to six mm of Hg, the flow of gas starts from our nostril to the alveoli. So, the basic thing is that the diaphragm goes down, it increases the volume, the volume increases, the pressure decreases in the thoracic cavity and the gaseous flow starts in. While in expiration, the signal shut down, the diaphragm goes upward in the resting position. 
when the diaphragm goes moves upward the thoracic cavity size decreases the pressure increases and the gases were exhaled out in the normal day to day respiration we inhale by the negative transpulmonary pressure but nowadays in the mechanical ventilation we use the positive pressure ventilation in which we give oxygen or the air mixture through a conduit into the lung so the physiologically both are the things different so whenever we push something in the lung it produces some pressure which is necessary to cause a flow of the gas and increases the volume the pressure volume and flow these are these three things are the most important thing and they are all dependent on each other ventilator usually control one of the thing and rest two of the things they change depending upon the compliance and the resistance of the lungs then the question arises what is compliance compliance is the amount of work which is required to inflate the lung it also indicates how stiff the lung so in ards situations or in pneumonia when the lungs is stiff the compliance goes down and if compliance goes down you need to work harder to inhale to gas to let the gas in while elasticity is, is uh, uh, absolutely different absolutely opposite to the compliance and it is the amount of work which is required to exhale out the gases the reciprocal of the compliance and if compliance is good the elasticity is bad if compliance is bad the elasticity is good and the third important thing is the resistance resistance is the amount of work which is required to move the air through the lung it in, it is affecting the inspiration as well as expiration both and it depends upon the diameter of the conduit or the diameter of the airway the less the diameter the more the resistance then what are the indications of mechanical ventilation any situation when the you think the airway is compromised maybe it is head injury or maybe it is trauma maybe it is the effect of drugs toxins poison or any neuromuscular disease or any any other situation uh, when the airway a patient is not able to hold the airway patient is not able to cough you need to uh, put the patient on mechanical ventilation then the respiratory failures when the ph is less than 7.25 or the pco2 is more than 50 or the po2 is less than 50 then we usually put a patient on mechanical ventilator or if by some of the diseases patients work of breathing increases like sepsis copd asthma or any other uh, lung diseases then also patient require rest and to reduce the work of breathing we put a patient on mechanical ventilation and what we achieve we support the illness because we don't want patient to uh, expend its energy on the respiratory part only we want the patient to support his healing by the energy whatever energy the patient is having reversal of hypoxemia and reversal of acute respiratory acidosis these are the two main indicator for the mechanical ventilation relief of respiratory distress if patient is having uh, some sort of distress because of any underlying condition the mechanical ventilation uh, always give help to the patient resting of the ventilatory muscles like uh, respiratory failure copd exacerbations or post surgery pain if you have a big incision also then the patient also having pain and uh, working against it or if patient is having a rib fracture then also uh, patients can be relieved with the help of mechanical ventilation it also helps in reduction of the intracranial pressure because if patient is agitated the intracranial pressure rises so we need to keep the patient down and knocked out and uh, this will help in stabilize in reduction of the intracranial pressure there are two kind of uh, ventilatory support is available one is a negative pressure ventilation and uh, and the positive pressure ventilation nowadays negative pressure ventilation is not used in earlier uh, era 1920 1930 the negative pressure ventilator were, in were introduced and uh, it worked very well during the polio epidemic but nowadays uh, only positive pressure ventilation is being used and uh, positive pressure means we are pushing air through a conduit or a tracheostomy tube or a endotracheal tube into the lung of the patient and we provide uh, gaseous exchange or we provide uh, oxygen to the patient 
there are four component of a, any kind of mechanical ventilation that means which type of breath we want what are the control variables what are the phase variables and what are the conditional variables so what kind of breath a patient can have when a patient is on mechanical ventilator number one a mandatory breath the mandatory breath is a breath is a breath which is started and ended by the machine that means patient is not taking any breath each and every breath is given by the machine it is started by the machine it is ended by the machine spontaneous breath a patient can take a spontaneous breath on ventilator also which is started and ended by the patient only and third is assisted breath which is initiated by the patient and supported by the machine so a combination of all these three kind of breath is there when a patient is taking uh, a ventilatory support then what are the control variables control variables could be pressure or volume or flow as we have discussed that if there is a change in the pressure there will be a change in the volume and the flow depending upon the compliance and the resistance of the patient and one of these thing will be controlled by the ventilator if patient is on pressure control then the pressure is under control of the machine if patient is on volume control then the machine determines the volume and if it is supported then the flow is determined the machine and rest two will be variable according to the depending upon the uh, resistance and the compliance of the patient lung then what the what are the phase variables phase variables means the change of inspiration to the expiration how the respiratory cycle goes into the uh, uh, when a patient is on mechanical ventilation so trigger the trigger variable means anything which initiate the breath so it could be a patient who can initiate the breath it could be time that means we set a respiratory rate suppose we set a respiratory rate of 15 that means every 4th second the breath will be initiated by the machine limiting or the targeting variable means how long this inspiratory cycle will continue who will determine this it will determine by the volume or the pressure if a patient is on volume control if say we have set 400 ml of volume so by the time 400 ml is delivered to the patient the inspiratory cycle shut down and the expiration starts similarly pressure control we set a pressure once we achieve that pressure the inspiration stops and expiration starts cycling variable cycling means change from inspiration to expiration so it is either the time uh, which we have set by the respiratory rate or the flow flow cycling usually happen during the pressure support ventilation when the patient starts exhaling the flow decreases and when the flow decreases up to an 80% of the normal uh, highest peak the cycling occurs and the baseline variable is the peak peak is the positive end expiratory pressure which always remains constant throughout the inspiratory and expiratory phase of the respiratory cycle so coming to the basic modes of ventilation one is the control mode ventilation so what do you mean by control mode ventilation control means everything is control of the machine or the physician patient neither is take initiating the machine nor he is ending the patient so as i said in control mode ventilation everything depends or in the hand of the physician or the machine patient cannot initiate the respiration so when a patient cannot initiate the respiration the control variable is volume depending upon the volume control or the pressure depending on the pressure control inspiration initiated by the time we have set a rate whether it is 15 breath per minute or 20 breath depending upon the patient condition and after each time the cycle or the breath cycle is initiated by the machine it is limited by the volume in a volume control or a pressure in a pressure control patient um, a mode and it is cycle by the time again the respiratory rate depend determine the time of the cycling in any ventilatory uh, 
monitor, you can see these three variable and these three kind of graph, which always in the red pressure, which always in the blue or in the yellow and volume either in the gray or in the yellow. So these are the international uh, color coding for these three graphs. So in a volume targeted ventilation, that means volume control ventilation, we control the volume. Patient initiates the breath and achieve the volume. Pressure and flows depending depends upon the patient variables that are the compliance and the resistance. If the compliance is low, then volume we achieve, but the pressure will be very much high. And the flow will be very low. If compliance is good, patient lungs are very compliant, then the volume we achieve, the pressure will be low. So the chances of trauma is low. It is very important when we are dealing a ARDS patient to determine these factors because we need to limit the pressure also. If we allow pressure to rise uh, more than 30, then there are more and more chances of getting uh, volume trauma or barotrauma or ventilator induced injury to the lung. In a COPD patient, the things are different because the elastasis is quite, uh, quite low and the compliance is quite good. So patient achieve the volume, but the pressure is quite low. The flow is determined by the resistance, which is the bronchospasm. So if flow is decreases and the resistance is quite high, then we need to decrease the respiratory rate to allow the patient to get the appropriate amount of volume. Similarly, in the pressure control ventilation, the pressure is controlled. You can see the flat line there. The pressure is controlled. Pressure will not go beyond this, but volume depends upon the patient compliance. If compliance is good, volume will be achieved much uh, more in comparison to the low compliant conditions. Then, Redmi, please mute your mic. Okay. Nowadays, uh, none of the ventilator is 100% control mode ventilation, having control mode, because each and every ventilator is having assist control mode ventilation. If we want a patient to breath with the ventilator, So, in the assist control mode ventilation, the breath is initiated by the patient or it could be initiated by the machine. If a patient is sedated and paralyzed, that means the patient's respiratory efforts are cut off, then each and every breath is delivered by the machine. And this mode is wor will work as a control mode ventilation. If we allow patient to initiate the breath, if patient is not paralyzed, then patient can initiate the uh, the breath or initiate the inspiration and then the rest is supported by the machine so acmv mode or in the volume control or the pressure control uh, type is nowadays the main mode which is available in all kind of ventilators total control mode ventilators are now obsolete the control variable is the volume and the pressure as the volume control ventilation. The inspiration is initiated by the time or the patient. If patient is not sedated and paralyzed, patient can initiate the breath, volume or pressure limited and time cycled. The graphics are almost same, but you can see here the green rounded point when there is a negative deflection. The baseline or the zero pressure is marked as the baseline. If it is going down, that means it is negative pressure. And why this negative pressure is, that means the patient is initiating the breath. In normal day-to-day, -day, our normal breathing, we initiate the breath by negative transpulmonary pressure, which is around minus five to minus six. So it also indicated here that if patient initiate the breath, then rest of the work will be done by the ventilator. The Maximum time the patient initiate the breath, all the breath will be supported by the machine. If patient is not initiating the breath, the breath will be delivered by the machine only. And rest is same. Then the third mode is the SIMA mode, uh, which is very, you know, 
uh, founded by the surgeons but uh, in critical care we are not using this mode any more now and uh, in this mode it is synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation so what is happening with the assist mode ventilation if suppose a patient is well awake and uh, he is not sedated and paralyzed and if he is taking a lot of breaths and simultaneously we set a rate of uh, around 20 or 30 in the machine also so there will be asynchrony or desynchrony and this desynchrony increases the work of breathing and causes a lot of problem in the ventilation of the patient so to remove this problem they introduce the sim your synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation that means if a patient is initiating a breath the machine will be supported if patient is not initiating a breath machine will deliver the breath and there is a zone of synchronization this green zone is the zone of synchronization when the machine waits for the patient to initiate a breath if patient is not initiating then machine will deliver if patient is initiating then machine will support so this synchronization zone is the 25% time of the previous breath which is taken by the patient so suppose a patient is taking a breath of around 20 uh, at the rate of 20 per minute and its machine is set at the rate of 12 per minute then after every breath which is initiated by the patient the machine waits for some millisecond for the next breath initiated by the patient if not then the machine delivers if yes then the machine supports rest is fine but it is not nowadays it is uh, not utilized in the critical care because it is considered as a uh, mode of uh, weaning from the ventilator but uh, you know weaning is also a difficult science and uh, we want the patient uh, uh, if he is supported by the breath then he should not be fatigued but uh, it is seen that in simv mode if patient was put on simv mode we are less uh, more casual towards the patient and patient keeps on uh, continuously put on assi mode for many days and uh, there is delay in the patient healing and they found that the, there is delay in the removal of ventilator also with uh, this mode so they introduce a new mode method that is the pressure support med uh, ventilation in which the breath is initiated by the patient only machine will not give any breath it only supports the patient in initiated breath the breath is triggered cycled and everything is done by the patient only so what happen if we want a patient to remove from the ventilator we we see the patient whether this patient is okay for the removal of ventilator or not and if we find a patient is okay hemodynamically stable the disease has reversed and can be taken off the ventilator we remove the patient from the ventilator to the pressure support if patient is doing good on the pressure support he can be weaned off from the me mechanical ventilator and if patient is not doing good on the uh, pressure support then patient was put back on the assist control so nowadays there is no role of simv mode due in the weaning protocol in this each and every breath is initiated see the pressure curve there is a downward on a negative deflection it indicates that each and every breath is initiated by the patient and it is supported by the machine only then a, a new mode which is cpap mode it is continuous positive airway pressure and uh, this is basically utilized in congestive heart failure patient or osa patients or copd type 2 respiratory failure patient where a continuous pressure is applied in both phases of the respiration in inspiration as well as expiration and uh, the basic thing is that it keeps the airway patent so the flow continuously goes in and out Uh, depending upon the patient's uh, work of breathing so what are the ventilator control what the things which we should set before the start of ventilator first of all the mode which mode we want to begin with we should always keep a patient on assist control mode ventilation sedated and paralyzed and wait for the reversal of the disease and settle down of the uh, hemodynamic parameters then second important thing is the tidal volume how much tidal volume a patient requires normally we take around 450 to 500 ml of volume in a normal adult then what is the respiratory rate we should set in normal respiratory rate we keep it around 12 to 14 uh, per minute flow rates flow rate depend upon the ie ratio 
I ratio usually is one is to two. Inspiration is one part and three part is of the two part is of the expiration. So suppose in a if we set a rate of fifteen, there is a four second cycle. In the four second, one point three second is of inspiration and two point seven second is of expiratory time. FiO two depending upon the patient oxygen requirement, trigger sensitivity. If you want to keep uh, want patient to initiate the ventilator, we keep the trigger in minus, minus two or minus three, so that the patient can initiate very easily. And if we do not want to keep a, to initiate the ventilator by the patient, we keep the trigger plus five or plus six, so that patient has to work from minus five or minus six to plus five to initiate the machine. Then the PEEP, PEEP depends upon the patient condition and the alarms. So these are the ventilatory controls which we should set in before the start of mechanical ventilator. Then these parameters are, uh, you know, basically guided by the, what is the problem the patient is having, whether the patient is having hypercapnia or hypoxemia. And these two basically uh, depend the tidal volume, FiO2, respiratory rate, and the PEEP. Uh, by the uh, when we did the setting in the uh, in the machine so to initiate the ventilator first of all we need to confirm the indication that the patient require mechanical ventilation then which type of ventilator is required invasive or non invasive if patient is having type 2 respiratory failure or congestive heart failure or uh, pulmonary edema we usually try to put a patient primarily on non invasive ventilation so that uh, we give some time we can go for the dialysis also uh, for few hours and then patient can be reversed. But if patient require uh, invasive support, then go to patient directly on the invasive support. Then we check the connections and the circuit and then the, we do the self-test. Self-test is done by the machine only. It tests the compliance, the leakage, the resistance of the circuit itself. And uh, we select the mode, select the variables, select the alarms. Then we connect it to the patient and then for few minutes, few initial minutes, we see the tidal volume which is being delivered to the patient. What is the pressure patient lung is creating and readjust the setting depending upon the pressure and the volume which is delivered to the patient. The goal of ventilation is to facilitate the oxygen release and maintain the normal PaCO2. So our lung basically are doing the two primary functions, release of the carbon dioxide and uh, oxygenation of the blood. So for carbon dioxide release, there are two variables. One is the volume or the minute ventilation. Uh, two variables. One is the tidal volume and the respiratory rate, which is the most important factor. And these two factors in the ventilator also determines the carbon dioxide exhalation. So if patient is having hypercarbia, we need to set a higher respiratory rate and fix the tidal volume because we cannot increase tidal volume beyond 8 ml per kg of the patient ideal body weight, so we can have the liberty to increase the respiratory rate. But that is also determined by the presence of auto peep in the patient. And uh, in the context of the ICU, there are many situations in which the patient carbon dioxide levels are quite high, like the fever, sepsis, injuries, feeding, surgeries, atelectasis, lung injury, ARDS. In many of the other conditions, patient is hyperventilating. And uh, for the carbon dioxide, we set respiratory rate and tidal volume. For oxygenation, we have two variables to set in. One is the FiO2 and second is the PEEP. PEEP, we cannot uh, increase up to an extent, uh, only up to 14 or 15 PEEP we can give, or in certain situations, we can go beyond 15, we can go up, give up to 20 PEEP to a patient, and FiO2, we can go maximum up to 100%. So with these two variables, we can, uh, determine the delivery of oxygen to the patient. Here in this picture in green zone, we can see there are zone one, two, and three. The zone one is the zone of dead space ventilation, where the ventilation is good, but perfusion is low. This is the uppermost portion of the lung. In here, the alveolar pressure is the maximum, which is more than the arterial pressure and more than the venous pressure. So the vessels are collapsed, but airway is patent with air inside but because there is no perfusion it is not taking part in the gaseous exchange then the zone two where the arterial pressure is more than the alveolar pressure so this zone is well perfused well ventilated 
and gas exchange usually occurs in zone 2 zone 3 it is the most lower most part of the lung in the supine position uh, in the sitting position and due to the gravity the arterial pressure and venous pressure more uh, both are more than the alveolar pressures alveoli are collapsed because of this pressure and this zone is having a loss of lot of atelectasis so here there is lot of shunting occurs but because of shunting also vq mismatch developed and uh, it also hampers the ventilation these three zones are also determined in the supine position also so the lower most part is zone 3 and upper most part will behave like zone 1 so what are the settings which we can adjust to improve the oxygenation we can increase the fio2 simplest maneuver to quickly increase the pao2 of the patient and we should try to keep fio2 uh, less than 60 if we can because more and more oxygen will increase and more and more free radical injury to the patient if despite of increasing the fio2 the adequate the oxygenation is not adequate then we can increase the peep of the patient what peep causes peep increases the frc peep recruits the collapsed alveoli and improve the vq mismatch in the zone 3 so by increasing the diameter of the alveoli we prevent the atelectasis and we allow air to go in in the well perfused zone so that the gas exchange will take part and these two variables are there fio2 and peep which determines the oxygenation of the patient the higher peep will reduces the venous return and the cardiac output and that can also uh, cause hypotension and uh, can cause a hemodynamics abnormality in a uh, in a patient so we cannot increase peep up to or more than 14 to 15 in very uh, certain situations only we can go up to 20 peep the descent advantages of high peep are the increase intrathoracic pressure which require pulmonary arterial catheter we, we cannot uh, measure intrathoracic pressure very correctly without the placement of a esophageal transducer and it may cause barotrauma and volume trauma also and what we can uh, do to improve the ventilation first of all we can go up to 35 breath per minute to a respiratory rate then we can increase the tidal volume to an extent of 10 ml per kg of ideal body weight then we can reduce uh, the generation of carbon dioxide like we can reduce the muscular activity we can keep the patient sedated and paralyzed we can control the seizures we can uh, remove the carbohydrate uh, diet from uh, the patient feed and we can control the hypermetabolic state so that the production of carbon dioxide can also reduced then we allow the permissive hypercapnia we uh, try to keep a ph more than 7.25 and if this we can achieve this with a little bit higher carbon dioxide we uh, you know we can allow the carbon dioxide to retain there then we can go for the i ratio or inverse ratio ventilation like if uh, we want to exhale out the carbon dioxide we can increase the i ratio from 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 3 1 is to 4 Uh, depending upon the respiratory rate and the lung uh, compliance then the plateau pressures we try to reduce the plateau pressure or to keep it below 30 mm of hg to minimize the barotrauma these are the alternative mode of ventilations like uh, high frequency oscillatory ventilation which is not now obsolete from the adult ventilatory techniques which is it is uh, being uh, utilized nowadays for the pediatric population second is uh, prone ventilation and uh, we have seen very good results of prone ventilation uh, in this covid era and acmo as well as the airway pressure release ventilation so these are the very new modes of ventilation techniques which uh, helps the patient uh, basically in the ventilation and oxygenation then before putting a patient on, on a mechanical ventilator we can give certain things to a patient like we can give some drugs or nebulize the patient we can provide theophylline steroids and we can do the tapping spirometry physiotherapy pain control uh, steam inhalation so that we can reduce the spasm of the patient if these all are not working we can go for the cpap or bipap if that is also not working we can go for the intubation of the patient 
then what are the criteria uh, of intubating a patient so if patient by any of the problem by any of the disease is deteriorating he or she is hemodynamic unstable if having respirated more than 35 if having hypoxemia respiratory uh, oxygen pao2 level less than 50 uh, or pco2 is more than 55 if patient minute ventilation is less than 10 liters per minute volume he is not generating or if a uh, patient by any means is not able to maintain the air we put a patient on intubation we intubate a patient put that on the mechanical ventilator so what are the initial settings we start with a fio2 of 50 can increase and decrease depending upon the spo2 and pao2 we start with a peep of 5 we can increase the peep depending upon the oxygenation and pao2 respiratory rate usually we keep around 14 or 12 to 16 and tidal volume 8 ml per kg in a normal uh, adult male patient in copd patient we can increase tidal volume up to 8 to 10 ml per kg of ideal body weight but we should not go beyond 10 to prevent over distension or over inflation because over inflation can cause detrimental effect or dynamic hyperinflation which reduces the cardiac output in ards we reduces the uh, tidal volume to 6 ml per kg or less than 6 ml per kg to 4 ml per kg depending upon the patient lung compliance we can go for the prone position ventilation also and pressure support if we are putting a patient on support mode then the initial setting is 10 we adjust these setting depending upon the patient compliance lung and po2 and pco2 levels then what are the criteria or the of the extubation of the patient so uh, before extubation like first thing is that the disease or the condition for which a patient is intubated should have been stabilized or reversed this is the most important thing like if you put a patient for surgery uh, only then if the anesthesia drugs effects goes down if patient pain is controlled if patient is conscious alert and hemodynamically stable we can remove the ventilator and can extubate the patient after few hours only and if some patients having residual effect of some anesthesia drug then we should keep patient for 24 hours on the ventilator and then patient should be hemodynamically stable patient should be uh, should not be on any vasopressor support should not uh, be planned for any hemodialysis should not be planned for any recent uh, any surgery in near future or for any procedure for which like mri for which patient requires intubation uh, in the near future then patient Uh, blood pressure uh, um, should be very much controlled uh, by uh, without the vasopressor or vasopressor is there then it should not be too high like norad or vasopressin support should be uh, like 2 to 3 ml per kg per uh, hour if it is going very minimum amount minimum dose if it is going then we can extubate a patient patient should be conscious should be following and should have a intact cough or gag reflex before extubation if patient is not having cough or gag reflex if the secretions is quite high then we should not extubate rather go for a tracheostomy to the patient then patient should be spontaneously breathing and uh, ventilatory setting should be minimized fio2 requirement should be around 40% peep should be less than 8 po2 fio2 should be good and pa should be more than 7.25 then which approach should be uh, followed nowadays we are following the pressure support uh, weaning methodology we directly put patient on pressure support see and wait for 30 minutes to 120 minutes what is happening with the patient if co2 is remain uh, is uh, starts retaining if uh, patient becomes more hemodynamic and unstable if respiratory rate is uh, rises more than 35 if saturation goes below 90 then we again switch to control mode ventilation if patient remains stable throughout 2 hours and if abg is stable patient is conscious coughing gag is okay hemodynamics remain stable then we can take out the ventilator from the patient then comes the spontaneous breathing trials these trials we usually perform on each and every intubated patient daily uh, on daily basis in the morning hours we stop the sedation of the patient we starts uh, reduces the ventilator setting reduces the peep reduces the fio2 put a patient on pressure support ventilation and we ask patient we see the patient how he is behaving so spontaneous breathing trials or spontaneous awakening trials both are given daily to the patient to see the readiness of the patient 
uh, for the extubation and the weaning. And there are certain field spontaneous breathing criteria, which is very important. If after putting a patient on spontaneous breathing, if respiratory rate goes beyond 35 for more than five minutes, if SpO2 is less than 90, if heart rate is more than 140, or there is rise in more, more than 20 uh, heart rate of the baseline, means if support it is 100, if it crosses uh, around 130, then it is a failed criteria. Systolic blood pressure, more than 180 or less than 90 or change in 20% of the systolic blood pressure. And if sustained increased work of breathing is there, the patient is like taking uh, labored breathing or cardiac arrhythmias appears. If pH is less than 7.30, then we should avoid extubation or weaning. Then we should put patient again on the control mode ventilation. Then... Uh, Continued ventilation after successful, like we have removed the patient from the ventilator, we have weaned patient from the ventilator, but we keep patient on the tube in certain situations when a patient is not fully oriented and conscious, is not able to maintain the airway. If the secretions is quite high, he has an unstable spine injury. And uh, like if his patient is having critical spine neuropathy or he if patient, we think that patient is not able to maintain the airway, then we go for a tracheostomy rather than extubating a patient. So the uh, in critical care, the need of tracheostomy is one when the patient is not able to maintain the airway and not able to produce the good amount of cough, not able to clear the secretions. Then we put a tracheostomy. Uh, Long-term complications of tracheostomy, we all know that um, it can cause tracheal stenosis or uh, a, a bleeding from the tracheostomy site or uh, uh, processor related problems are there. But uh, it is very useful tool after five or six days of ventilation, if we think that the patient is requiring more and uh, more uh, ventilatory support or patient is not able to be extubated, we put a patient on tracheostomy so that we can do the suctioning, pulmonary toileting, physiotherapy, and it is very easy to put a patient back on the ventilator with the help of tracheostomy. Thank you, sir. Yes. For many COPD patients in the world, they come with they are very comfortable in the room and PAO2 sometimes and shunt patients also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what to do for them. You know, for a patient of COPD, like there are certain conditions, certain indication for the NIV support in COPD patient or in certain patients. The type one support can this NIV can be given to CHF patient. Second is COPD type two respiratory failure patient. If only PCO two is high, but if pH is maintained, you can avoid putting a patient on. So if pH is low. CO2 is high, then this ventilatory mode is helpful to the patient. Similarly, shunt. Shunting may usually we avoid putting a patient on NIV because shunting is there because of the collapse. And NIV uh, also the help may be also. So we, it is good to put a patient on mechanical ventilator, do the suctioning, do the bronchoscopy, give the physio to the patient so that all the secretions can be exhaled. Sometimes we extubate the patient over and that's very intubated. How will at the time after trial they gave the test? Why the patient goes against into intubation? And now, after few intubations, you always advise to continue it to for a long time. Why? No. The thing is that it is a dictum sir. That you patient ko eight or two trials can be done. Ideally, to if you extubate a patient, patient should remain extubated for more than 24 hours. If they 24 hours, re-intubate, then there is a uh, decision problem. You assess all the things before extubation. So there could be electrolyte imbalance, there could be hypocalcemia, there could be hyperphosphatemia, there could be hypomagnesemia, there could be muscle fatigue, there could be... Uh, nerves and neurons like a critical for neuropathy patient. Patient could have harboring the infection and which is now evident. The secretions could be had. There are multiple problems which is apart than the normal spontaneous breathing and awakening trials, which are the factors for the extubation. There are certain uh, 
disease related factors also suppose you extubate the patient and disease progresses then also you need to put in so the criteria is for 24 hours but yes if patient is reintubated for several time then we need to search for some other reasons like many patient we have find out myasthenia gravis uh, in repeated uh, intubation attempts and um, myasthenic crisis they it develops and then patients are not able to be in off in that situation we try to keep patient on trichostomy sir our post of patients from just for my knowledge mm -hmm. positive mode is always missing which means positive mode positive mode yes so mm -hmm. all very machine uh, all control is very machine mm -hmm. assisted mode is uh, will the more machine will assist the patient mm -hmm. and can come spontaneous is complete this thing yes. so this order will be first the patient if we sedate it will be on the positive mode then mm -hmm. comes to assisted then mm -hmm. comes to spontaneous yes. this order yes always when you initiate a patient on mechanical ventilator we you should give 24 hours or 48 hours to the patient a situation where he is calm and uh, the rest of he is not working actually so whatever energy because uh, now the concept is of energy sir ki aapki kitni energy kahan pe utilize ho rahi hai patient sepsis mein hai ya patient kisi bhi other disease ki wajah se usko healing ke liye time chahiye healing ke liye energy chahiye and if you are wasting his or energy on the breathing part patient is not feeding patient uh, is having lot of electrolyte and other fluid issues सो so, अगर वो सारा एनर्जी आपने ब्रीदिंग में वेस्ट कर दिया देन उसका हीलिंग प्रोसेस डिले हो जाता है सो so, इनिशिएट करने के 48 एट आवर्स तक आप पेशेंट को सडेटेड रखिए पैरालाइज रखिए देन यू रिमूव द पैरालिसिस कीप ए पेशेंट ऑन सडेटेड सो डेट कंट्रोल मोड कन्वर्ट्स इनटू टू असिस्ट कंट्रोल मोड एंड देन यू स्टार्ट गिविंग स्पॉन्डेनियस ब्रीदिंग ट्रायल्स और प्रेशर सपोर्ट है दो Okay. Once you have achieved that, you in case of the respiratory rate. But here we need to see whether the auto peep is generating or not. If patient is not generating any auto peep, auto peep means you are inhaling, but you are not able to exhale out completely. So some air is retaining in the lung after each breath. So your lung keeps on expanding, and it is creating a dynamic hyperventilation kind of condition also. so to treat that you need to give bronchodilators steroids and you need to increase the rate of peep also to counter the auto peep so increase the rate if there is no auto peep increase the tidal volume check the i ratio you can increase to 1 is to 3 also and then wait after 2 hours you repeat the ecg if suppose co2 is further rising then you need to readjust the segment rate to set depend on this sometimes ek hum chota sa manual roll karte hain we disconnect the patient from the ventilator aur hum pure chest ko aise press karte hain theek hai to jitna bhi dam aapka air andar trapped hai it will come out okay and then we reconnect the ventilator so the compliance improves with this so dynamic hyperventilation ko treat karenge then suit is start washing up आप पेशेंट को डाल दीजिए एंड यू कैन मूव अराउंड आप और दूसरे पेशेंट देख सकते हैं उसमें टाइम मतलब आपको वही रहना होता है आप चौबीस घंटे अगर आपकी ड्यूटी किसी की है
नहीं सर दो तीन चीजें ऑब्जेक्टिवली देखना है तो पीसीओ टू देखना है PCO2 PCO2 देखना है है ना और या रेस्पिरेटरी रेट देखिए लो PCO2 वुड इंप्लाई हायर वर्कआउट बोथ हाई PCO2 एज़ वेल एज़ लो PCO2 इंप्लाइज हाई वर्कआउट ब्रीथिंग इनिशियली इफ पेशेंट PCO2 इज लो दैट मींस रेस्पिरेटरी इज हाई पेशेंट इज वर्किंग वेरी हार्ड देन इट स्टार्ट्स फेलिंग मसल से स्टार्ट्स फटीक द CO2 विल राइज वेरी रैपिडली सो बोथ ऑफ द थिंग्स आर एसोसिएटेड विद वर्कआउट ब्रीथिंग so how do we know one of the major issues is when you are going to extubate a patient is his work of breathing is his work of breathing too much how do we assess that simple thing is that you put a patient on practice continuous breathing it. trial yeah. give a trial reduce the rate reduce the support reduce the fio2 fio2 comes down to 40 rate it because it is given by the pressure support ventilation so rate is limited by the patient only पेशेंट जितना भी इनिशिएट करेगा वो करेगा सपोर्ट हम उसको छह से आठ रखते हैं टेन रखते हैं सो फाइव का पी फाइव टेन का सपोर्ट टोटल सपोर्ट इज फिफ्टीन गिविन टू ईच एंड एवरी स्पॉन्टेनियस ब्रीथ विच इज इनिशियट बाय द पेशेंट नाउ यू लुक द पेशेंट इफ द रेस्पिरेटरी रेट इज गोइंग बियॉन्ड थर्टी और थर्टी फाइव यू कैन सी पेशेंट इज ब्रीथिंग लाइक तो थोड़ी देर में फटी हो जाएगा इनिशियल so, तो आपका सीओ टू कम रहेगा या फॉल हो जाएगा बट आफ्टर फ्यू आवर्स it will rise again so this is the one thing second thing jitna zyada patient breathe in breathe out karega uska hemodynamic parameter change rahenge tachycardia sabse pehli cheez hoti hai jo aapko dekh sakte ho ki resting jab humne shuru kiya tha 90 tha and now it is 140 130 so it if there is no pain then it's also increase indicates indirectly the high work of breathing तो उस समय हम क्या करते हैं एक बार नेबलाइज करा के देखते हैं सक्शन करके देखते हैं थोड़ा कॉफ करा के देखते हैं अगर उससे वो सेटल नहीं होता है तो फिर आपको वापस डालना है केवल फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स में जो मैंने कहा क्योंकि वो बेटर होता है कि फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स में जो मेडिकल पेशेंट है उसमें हम उनको पैरालाइज करके रखें बिकॉज मेडिकल प्रॉब्लम्स एकदम से 24 घंटे में रिवर्स नहीं होंगी इट टेक सम टाइम जो भी इतना टेक हो रहा है आपकी सर्जरी में जो पेशेंट आ रहे हैं पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव आ रहे हैं इफ यू वांट देम टू बी सडेटेड पैरालाइज स्टार्ट सम पैरालिटिक एजन अदरवाइज सडेशन इज एनफ फॉर इट फेंटेनल इज प्रेफर्ड बिकॉज़ इट इज हैविंग अ गुड एनालजेसिया प्रोपोफोल आल्सो इट इज गुड इट इज यू नो एनालजेसिया एज़ वेल एज़ सम सॉर्ट ऑफ मसल वीक मसल पैरालिसिस भी आता है उसके बाद बट गुड एनालजेसिया बाय प्रोपोफोल मेडासोलाम बहुत वीक होता है शॉर्ट एक्टिंग होता है जनरली प्रेफर नहीं करते हैं एंड वैक और एट्रा जब जरूरत होता है वर्क ऑफ ब्रीथिंग इज डिटरमिनड बाय बोथ इंस्पिरेशन और एक्सप्रेशन और एक्सप्रेशन रिमेंस बोथ बोथ सो डस पीप इंक्रीज वर्क ऑफ एक्सप्रे वर्क ऑफ ब्रीथिंग पीप डिक्रीजेस वर्क ऑफ ब्रीथिंग पीप डिक्रीज वर्क ऑफ सर इनिशियली इट वॉज थॉट दैट डेली इवेंट ब्रॉन्कोस्कोपिक क्लियरेंस शुड बी डन इट वॉज ए कंसेप्ट आफ्टर बिफोर नो year in 2005 and 10 it this concept was introduced wo ye kehte hain ki chote chote jitne bhi aapke alveoli atelectasis ho rahe hain secretions so you can take it out after giving you physiotherapy do a quick suction and come out but it was seen that it is not giving any benefit over a normal tracheal suction so nowadays uh, we are giving bronchoscopic toileting only in patient when there is collapse or when we want to collect a sample from a, a particular segment of the lung otherwise physiotherapy followed by a normal tracheal suctioning is uh, indicated nowadays and uh, the drawback of uh, daily repeated bronchoscopy is that we are reducing the peep to the patient because we need to open up the, the channel and uh, we are creating more hypoxia to a patient we are introducing some fluid inside the patient uh, tracheal bronchial tree and that fluid can cause some infection to the patient and repeated touching of the bronchial wall can causes edema and hyperemia to that part of the lung so only if indicated then we are doing nowadays daily ka bhi filhal nahi so how do you say that it is not consolidation it is collapse 
so uh, there are many factors we can see the x rays also of one thing because usme aajkal to x rays mein bhi dikhta hai lung ultrasound mein bhi aap collapse aur uh, consolidation ko change different kar sakte hain and uh, third thing physiotherapy aap daily kar rahe hain agar usse koi change nahi aa raha then we can go for the endoscopy okay um i think uh, we will close the session and once again i would like to thank dr ashish jain for accepting our request and invitation to talk to us about mechanical ventilation thank you very much thank you avinash once again thank you sir thank you